Hey guys, Anthony Pierce Boni here back with another market update. In today's video, we're going to talk about where the market went this past week. We're going to talk about where I see the market going this coming week. And if you are looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you definitely want to hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. I've had a ton of trial and error, ton of losses, ton of lessons learned along the way with trading. But if you stick with it over time, I believe that you can make it and become consistently profitable as well if you're not already. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. Uh, and one last thing real quick, if you do appreciate the video, Give it a thumbs up, it'd be awesome. I really appreciate the support here. So what we're looking at is ES on the daily chart, which is the S&P 500 futures. And what we see is we did start to come down. Uh, I was in short average 4170. I actually got out of my short at 4138 on Thursday. Reason being is there was some internals showing that we might get a bounce on Friday. Uh, Friday, we did trade lower and then got pushed up. So I started to scale back into the short. Uh, I put quarter size on at 4150, another quarter ad at 4160, which actually was the Friday high. So now I'm holding about uh, half of my previous short position size at an average of 41.55 short. So I'm looking to add in case we push up higher, we will see that we just got to the 38 fib. We could trade up to the 50 or the 618. If we go to the 618, we're looking at about 41.75. Or we push up and we sweep the high at 42.10 before it continue lower. I think that's a slim chance now. I really do have even more confidence that this was the high, but we could get a bounce on Monday, push up into the 618 for 41.75, and then I can add more to my short. But currently, I'm short half size at an average of 41.55. And my TP is actually uh, May 8th, middle middle of May or so, early May, getting down to fill the fair value gaps down here about 4,000. So, you know, uh, stop loss is going to be 4250 still, still sitting at now 1.6 R. So I did take about 32 points because I had an average short of 4170. I got out at 4138, which was around the lows on Thursday. Friday morning, we dumped lower and then pushed back up. So a few things I wanted to show you, take a look at. Uh, number one being the dollar. The dollar did not continue to push up. It had some weakness here. We're trading sideways. I have this alert here because I do think that this is the next target for the dollar. I think we're just, you know, building strength here. We're going to push back up and push up to those highs. When we do that, the market tends to move in opposite directions. Previous videos, we went over how we swept this low here from February 2nd, and now we're pushing back up, got the market structure shift. I think we just wanted to sweep those lows. And now, now we're going for the target highs about 103. If that does happen over the coming weeks, then we will likely see that 4,000 level on ES futures. NASDAQ has been quite weak. Uh, it's been rolling over quicker than ES has. So because of that, I think we can see these targets definitely 12,700. Um, my TP I wrote down is actually 12,500 by May 8th. So, you know, I'm not personally trading NASDAQ because in the past it's been volatile. It stopped me out plenty of times. So I'm sticking with ES because it's been cleaner for me lately. However, I can't ignore that there's been more weakness for the Nasdaq recently. The banks have been holding up better. So the S&P 500 has been trading more sideways and making higher highs. One thing you'll actually see is ever since that uh, Friday 31st, we've just been trading lower and being weaker, lower, lower, lower. But then on ES 31st, we've been actually still putting in the highs. So Nasdaq has been weaker. So I am anticipating Monday, Tuesday, we maybe push up to the 41.75 and then push back down. One thing I wanted to cover is in the previous video, I said that I think we would see 4110 or 4100 at some point in this past week that just finished up. We didn't end up seeing that and we got a low of about 4130s, not the 4110, 4100. I back test the VIX and I said that when the VIX makes a new weekly low, we do get about a hundred point sell off on ES futures. You know, we, from the low, to, from the high to the low, um, we got about 64 points, so we didn't quite get the 100 points, but you know, the short worked out. I did get out of my puts only for a small gain. Uh, I didn't want to hold a theta decay in case we get a bounce next week. So got out of the puts, just holding the shorts on ES futures. Now I wanted to show you the VIX again because the VIX went even lower and that's why I am even more confident now in us pushing up, going for that 100 point sell off. Because if you take a look, look at the VIX on the weekly chart, this was this last week. I actually made an error because last week I said that you know, we pushed to the lows. The low on this week here was actually 1706 and then the low here was 1707. So I was actually wrong. We didn't actually push through this low. So that makes sense why we didn't actually get the full 100 point sell off, but we still we still told, sold off and we didn't push up higher. So it did work out in our favor anyways. However, this week now we do have a new lower low on the VIX, making it extremely high probability 
80 to 90 percent chance that we do sell off 100 points from friday so friday we're sitting at about 41.61 on the high that means that we could see 40.60 at some point in this coming week so if this weekly bar gets down to 40.60 that could be looking like you know we're right 41.65 and the low gets us down to about 41.60 uh, gets us down to 40.60 right here so this is what could be coming in this coming week right here based on a few things, but this is mainly just on the VIX. I'm more confident in short still, not very confident in us pushing up higher. We do have a lot of earnings coming up. We had uh, T Tesla actually drag, start to drag down uh, ES and NASDAQ with poor earnings, but coming week we have a lot more big boys with earnings. So you can take a look at uh, the calendar to see what earnings are coming up. But since we're going into earnings, we're gonna see if we're gonna continue to have strength or if we're gonna start dipping down. Again, I'm leaning more to us dipping down. One thing that was a red flag is I've been looking at DJT, remember uh, Dow Transports? We had that, that uh, Dow Theory crash signal. Now, one red flag I had is we kept making lower lows. So we kept making lower lows, ES kept making higher highs, and Dow kept making higher highs. However, this week, DJT actually broke out of this, this lower high trend, and we put in a higher high in recent trading, but we still have this overall bigger divergence of going lower so we're gonna have to see how this plays out that made things a little rocky however hyg we still have the divergence here big time if you take a look at uh april 18th which was the high april 18th we're going lower from march 31st to april 18th you can go over to es and march 31st is right where my mouse is April 18th is right here. So we still have the severe divergence there where ES is going higher, smart money is going lower, indicating that we're likely to get a bigger sell off. It happens previous times. You can uh, take a look at my previous video where I explained that. And you can back test it yourself. If you just take a look at HYG, when it starts to make lower highs and ES uh, starts to make consistent higher highs, it just signals some weakness and there's likely a big drop coming for ES futures. A combination with uh, divergences on the VIX, HYG, and DJT, we're seeing how there's likely to come a bigger sell-off at some point in this end of April, beginning of May. The yields have been creeping up again as well, indicating that you know the economy may be stronger than we think. It's not as weak as we think because why would yields be creeping up like this on the daily chart? We're, we're not trending lower. We're actually starting to push back up on the 10-year and the two-year. So this makes it look like the economy is a little hotter. Uh, in inflation is gonna be a little more entrenched. And the Fed needs to keep rates up higher for longer, uh, indicating actually more pain for the stock market because things will break if they keep rates up higher for longer. Two things I want to take a look at is the um, fear and greed index. Remember I said in previous videos that if you see the put to call ratio consistently make lower lows, it starts to indicate that a high is going to be formed. It's possible that this was the low of the put to call ratio and we start trending higher making higher lows and higher highs and as we're making higher lows and higher highs es is trading lower and lower until we get another peak like this march 14th where the put to call ratio is at 1.1 1.2 that signifies a major bottom we we go long on that bottom not blindly but you combine that with other things and, and then things start to turn in your favor if you look at december 5th to december 28th you can see that there was a low in the put to call ratio on december 5th and then there was a high on december 28th so so what this suggests this suggests right here that Around December 5th, there was a high formed, and then we started trading lower for those two, three weeks until December 28th. Around December 28th would be a bottom and a good spot to go long, and then put to call ratio starts to fall. So you can go ahead and back test this. Let's go look at December 5th and December 28th to see if that actually happened. So you pull it up on the daily chart, you go over to December 5th, and you'll see December 5th is right here so right where my mouse is yeah it was near a top we were very close to a top 41.14 was the top december 5th we started at 40.75 we went lower we did push up and actually spike through so maybe we're not correct however if you go to december 28th december 28th right by the low so just look you know we're at 40.75 on december 5th and then we're right by the bottom december 28th at uh, 38.08 so that's 270 point difference yeah you know you would have gotten probably stopped out because if you're short here you would have got start, stopped out by this aggressive spike uh i think it was a cpi so yeah you would have been stopped out would have had some pain but you can see what i mean like we did really trend lower and put in a bottom around that december 28th area and then turn it back up so that's just one signal i look at go ahead and back test djt 
diverging with the Dow. These are all things you can go ahead and backtest. And then as you combine these things, you can kind of see, you start to develop this feel that you can get more confident in your trades. One last thing I wanted to cover before we go is what's coming up in terms of news. Monday, non-events, no news really. Tuesday, just consumer confidence at 10 a.m., nothing special. Wednesday, again, nothing special. Thursday, we have advanced GDP, quarter over quarter, and unemployment claims. That's something special. But then Friday, we have the press conference. We have some things throughout the day, but it's it's a, it's a slower news cycle. There's not a whole bunch of major news events that are going to really send the market flying on, the, on the, the day of the event. But just take a look at it before you place any trades, of course. And that's all I wanted to cover in this video. So thanks so much for watching. I am looking for a, a bounce maybe uh, early week. And then I am expecting at some point us to trade down to about 4060 to 4100 into this fair value gap between Monday and Friday uh, to end out April. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Look out for the next video coming out Wednesday. It will be about Wednesday night or uh, Thursday morning. I, I currently post two videos a week going over the trades I'm in, the market outlook of where I see the market going, and any trades that I will want, want to break down that I took over the course of the week. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.